you're perfectly welcome to remain here. Um, you're just gonna wrap up the sleeping gear. I can do that. You can stay as long as you want. I just wanna make sure you're okay. This officer's entire job is to check in on the homeless population of his city. Good morning. You guys have masks? Eric Helberg is part of the homeless outreach program at the Cambridge Police Department. Sitting over there is perfectly legitimate. Laying out on the sidewalk is not. It's easy to go in there with force and force the person to cooperate. But once you've done that, the relationship is over. Do you sleep on the street? Do you go to the shelter? Sometimes people look at us just like police officers rather than you know the, all the social work and stuff that we do out here. The department is trying to do all it can to repair a strained relationship with the city's homeless. We had these zero tolerance um, initiatives. If you see somebody drinking in public, arrest them, arrest them. And we did that for years, if not decades. Putting somebody who is homeless or addicted to substances into a criminal justice system, that's not helping anybody. What could help is a different kind of approach outside of the police department. Make sure they're all right if you see the homeless. Protect yourselves at all times and stay safe. These men in orange vests walk around providing blankets, food, and support for the city's homeless population. Stay warm and whatever, man. They're part of the city's business improvement district. We hear them, we listen to them, we understand them, we feel their pain because most of us been through it. See, you have to really walk into their shoes to really understand what I'm saying. Many wonder if helping the homeless should fall under the police department at all. I don't want anything bad to happen to you. We visited Cambridge to see which method actually works. We are usually the first person that these people come in contact with, especially when they're in crisis. You see him, right? I do. Are you in danger right now? I don't know. All right, listen, Jackie. Yeah, let me... This has never happened to okay. me in my do life. Do you want to go to the hospital right now? Do you want to go to the hospital right now? What am I going to do? Every... Eric is trying to calm a woman named Jackie as she tells him about an alleged crime committed against her. I think you should go home for now. I want you to get a hold of the detective. Why don't you go somewhere where it's safe? Jackie, will you go to the other corner? I'm go to gonna kill myself. Jackie, you have a great gun. Don't say that, because you said you're gonna call an ambulance. Yeah, you're gonna yeah, could I have uh, pro EMS, please, at Kyle Barron Plaza? He calls for medical aid, and she heads to the hospital. Jackie's uh, intoxicated. She's experiencing emotional distress. About a decade ago, the department's policies would have forced Eric to arrest Jackie for public intoxication. Changing how officers respond to issues of homelessness was essential for Cambridge. The number of people living on the streets is almost three times higher than the national average. According to our homeless census on any given year, we have about 500 people living on the street. The problem is partly because of Cambridge's skyrocketing housing prices. The average cost of a single family home in 2019 was about $1.5 million, almost four times the national average. And while the standard rent for a one bedroom is a little over 1,600 in the US, recent estimates show it's much higher in Cambridge. It can be costly for someone receiving little to no wages. A person earning minimum wage in Massachusetts would have to work nearly 100 hours a week to afford housing at the city's lowest rates and not having a place to sleep at night makes everything else harder. I've been homeless for six months. I'm very educated, college degree. I can go to work tomorrow, but how can I go to work without having a stable place? This could happen to anybody. Patrolling the city's homeless used to be both challenging and ineffective for the Cambridge Police Department. The officers rarely developed relationships with those who were unhoused. Instead, most interactions took place after an altercation or call for help. It would often lead to arrests for low-level crimes, like loitering or drinking in public. 
the formal criminal justice system was like a, a revolving door. So we'd arrest somebody, then they'd be let out in the street, you know, uh, a couple of hours later, and then they're drinking again. Christine Elo oversees the homeless outreach program as the city's first black female superintendent. It launched in 2007, just two years before the department was placed in the national spotlight over the arrest of Professor Henry Louis Gates. The Cambridge police uh, acted stupidly in arresting somebody when they, there was already proof that they were in their own home. For me, that was almost like the beginning of like the Black Lives Matter movement. To where? You want to go shelter? To shelter? The moment forced the police department to reevaluate and train officers to treat civilians with respect. I think there's a denial in some police circles about systemic racism and the impact that it has had on black and brown communities. Some people feel like it's their own fault. If black people worked harder, if brown people worked harder, then they could find their way out of poverty and find their way to a successful life with the American dream. What's your name? Junior. Junior. Yeah. Hey, come on, green eyes. Right, green eyes. Yep. Killing the ladies. Take care. So when you think about being seen as legitimate in the eyes of the community, it's really dealing with the whole person uh, in whatever issue they're dealing with, right? So uh, we want to treat people with respect and dignity. <laughs> Have you been drinking at all? Nope. Here you are, sir. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Anything else you need today? It's perfectly legitimate to sit on that bench all day if you want. If I see somebody that's, you know, slumped over, I'm going to at least say, are you okay? You can stay as long as you want. I just want to make sure you're okay. Those on the receiving end often say they appreciate CPD's efforts, especially compared to other cities. Like Cambridge Police is the most common. Man, I, I don't, I don't been around police that whoop your ass. And these police, I'm telling you right now, never hurt us. They don't. They help us out. If they weren't there, I'd be dead right now. They're very professional and they and they listen very carefully. If they approach you, they approach you with dignity and respect. Still, the department's most recent report shows homeless arrests increased to almost 16% of the total arrests in 2015. It's a lot for a group that accounts for less than 0.5% of the city's population. But the department says it's stopped tracking homeless arrests in recent years, partly because it's challenging to prove whether someone is homeless. The department also faced criticism in 2020 after residents demanded the reallocation of funds. Thousands showed their support for other community resources instead of the police. All right, all right, how y'all doing? Snoop, how you doing? Here you go, how you doing? One alternative to policing in Cambridge is the Business Improvement District, or BIDS. Take your warm-ups, make sure you got hand warmers and be safe out there. Michael Monasteem has led the organization since 2019, but his work is more important now than ever. We wear bright, visible colors so you can see us. You're welcome. That omnipresence is important, especially as there's been a, a decline in other sort of foot patrol that we've seen. How are you doing there? Blankets? No, no. What you need? Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank, yes. Yeah. Citizen Bank is up there, right across the street. Ambassadors for bids check in on people who are unhoused, many coming from the streets themselves. There you go. You can have a good day. Paul White has been an outreach ambassador for a couple of years now. He oversees a team of eight, but before that, he was living on the streets for almost a decade. I ended up on the streets because I burnt all my bridges with my loved ones, family, friends, and all of that by um, drugging, stealing, uh, robbing. You say it, I done it. I was a mess in and out of jail. I was going nowhere real fast, faster than fast. He vividly remembers interactions with officers. Back when I was drinking and drugging and all of that, my thing was to uh, talk trash to them. All righty, here we go. Rain or shine, ambassadors walk around to different hotspots, including needle exchanges, warming shelters, and bus stops. They hope to get ahead of issues before they get worse. Oftentimes, Cambridge Police homeless outreach is responding to a concern. 
So the work that they do, while it's meant to be proactive, sometimes it's reactive. While both organizations operate differently, BID still relies on the police for help when needed. The police here, they save a lot of lives too. There's people overdosing every day. And the cops are on the scene, you know what I mean? They know everybody. Trust me, they know everybody. They know, they know them by their names and all that. Gail, are you back at Albany Street? How long have you been back there? How long have you been back there? A minute. A minute? Thank you. You're welcome. The police department is slowly regaining its trust among the homeless population. Instead of arrest, officers are encouraged to file court orders that lead to treatment opportunities. The number of orders filed has tripled since the initiative began in 2013. It's looking for alternatives to the criminal justice system, whether it's mental health issues or substance abuse or a combination of that, plus homelessness and poverty. Policing should be about building relationships with the community and do that in such a way that people don't look at, at me with fear. You know, we look at each other with mutual respect. It's me. Even with all this effort, the city's homelessness numbers remain steady shedding light on a systemic problem that might not be solved with just one group. My biggest hope is that I can get to one and their life can change and for them to pass it on to someone else as it was passed down to me.